Hello, this is Dave from MeRC, and this is a momentous occasion. Yes, I just got my ND filters in from my Mavic Mini, and these are Sunny Life filters. I ordered them through Walmart. Of course, they probably came from China. These are inexpensive filters, and uh, they only have about a price range of around $30 to $34, somewhere in that area. You might even be able to get them cheaper. I don't know. But let's take a look inside the box. Okay, it does look like it comes with a carrying case. It's not this. It's the thing inside. So there's the carrying case. And we have a little cleaning cloth. And then we have some stickers. I guess so you can label different values of your ND filters. Alright, let's see what's inside the carrying case. Here we go, that lid just pops up. It isn't hinged. I'm not sure which one is which. But let's just go ahead and take one out and look at it. Okay, that is the ND32 right there. So 4, 8, 16, and 32. Now we want to go ahead and see how it fits onto the Mavic Mini. So it has a little hook that goes around behind the camera and then the face of it just sits over the top of it. So how do we get it on there? So if you notice the lens is offset a little bit going over to the right on the Mavic Mini, so that means of course the ND filter has to be over on the right. Alright, so I'm going to grab it like this and try not to touch either the lens on the camera or the filter itself. And I'm just going to push it on there. And that looks like all there is to it. You'll notice this clip right here isn't in the center and that's normal, it won't be. That's just the way it goes. And uh, you just got to be careful not to overstress the gimbal, but yeah, it's on there tight. And then to remove it, you just pull like that and it comes right off. These are very light. I don't think it's going to increase the weight on the Mavic Mini. But uh, let's go find out about that. I'll go ahead and put it back on and uh, will weigh it. I don't think there's any need in me weighing it by itself because it probably won't register much on my scale. It wouldn't be accurate. But I'll just go ahead and put it on the back onto the Mavic Mini. You heard a little snap there when it went on. I think that's all there is to it. Alright, let's get that weight. Alright, gonna put the Mavic Mini with the ND filter. This is the number 32, but Probably all the way about the same. I'm going to put it on there. And we have 150 grams. And of course, how accurate it is, I don't know. But the, the idea is to keep your Mavic Mini 150 grams or less. There's 149 right there. And all I did was pick it up and put it down. So I think it's somewhere between 149 and 150. So it is still under the weight limit in most countries so that you don't need to register it even with the filter on there. And of course I have some stickers and things I could remove to make it a little bit lighter if I wanted to, but I don't see the need in it. So the next question is, will the gimbal initialize properly with the weight of the ND filter on there? I suspect it will, but let's give it a try. Alright, so let's go ahead and turn the Mavic Mini on and see what the gimbal does as far as initialization. Let's see it moving around and it initialized. It looks alright. Okay, the other question I have is will this cover go back on with the ND filter on there? So I'm going to try to do that. Well, let's see here. So you can see these little ridges right here are pressing up against the ND filter 
and I can't quite get it on there, so I can sort of. All right, it's sort of on there now, but uh, I don't think I would recommend doing that. It's just too tight on it, pressing on it too hard. So, looks like the best thing to do is take the ND filter off before you put the cover back on. Now we just need to go ahead and fly it and see what happens. So we're going to test out the ND32 filter and fly the Mavic. But we do have a dog barking, so just keep that in mind. But let's go ahead and adjust our different attributes here. Go in the camera here and we'll go ahead and set that to 30 frames a second. If you want 24, it's up here. But I'm going to go with 30. And we're going to follow the 180 degree shutter rule. So here I've got 1 60th of a second, twice the shutter speed. Or the shutter speed's twice the frame rate, excuse me. And then I've got the ISO on 100. And we'll just see what we got a zero right now for the EV. All right, let's see if we can take off. Here we go. Take off. I'm just doing this real quick. Because I got a lot of wind. All right, let's start the recording. You can hear the funny noise because I do have a lot of wind. But let's just go out here. Tell you what, I think I'm going to go inside. I'm just going to go inside here and watch it out the window. I can see the screen much better. And we'll just go out here. Now I'm only at about 15 feet. Let's go up a little higher. Here comes the dumb crows again. <laughs> I think they'll leave me alone once I get out here. The crazy crow is still after me. You can see around pretty good. All right, let's just uh, go out here with the sun at my back. I can still see the drone. This is line of sight. All right, let's just see uh, if we change the uh, ISO a little bit. I think it actually doesn't look too bad just like that. But if I was to change the ISO, see what happens. See how that gets very bright. Let's try 200. I think 200 right there is pretty good, but you see the EV is negative right there. If I go to 400, now we got a plus EV, but that's way too plus. So I'm going to leave the everything the same, but bring this to 200. And that looks just about right well-balanced EV. So it's really windy. Um, I don't think I'm going to stay out here very long. I just wanted to get uh, a look at what the filters do and I think they work great. This is in very bright sunlight. Uh, there's the house where I'm at. Of course you can't see me. Uh, if I switch around here, the sun's over here somewhere right in that area, but you know, the filter's really holding it down so that we don't have any blown out film. It looks good. That's pretty good right there. So that's the test. I think the filters really help so you can follow that chart that I showed you in the last video. And if you want to look at that, I'll just put a link here. It explains the whole thing on how to follow the 180 degree shutter rule so that you can get cinematic footage. And of course it's even more cinematic if you put it on 24 frames per second. But uh, that's not what I did. All right, let's just bring it back. Oh, they blew, my mat got blown away. I guess it's down on the ground somewhere. And I'm looking right into the sun there. There I am right there. I was actually looking into the shadows, excuse me. So I'm going to put it on uh, 400, that's not enough. 800, and you can see the EV is 0.7, so that's pretty good for that. 
All right, let's land it. Landing. All right, mission accomplished. Oh, there's my mat way over there. Huh. And there's the filter still on there. You can see the gimbal's working good. Let's go ahead and turn it off. So I think the Sunny Life ND filter set worked out fine for me. One thing to note is it doesn't come with an ND64, but I don't usually use an ND64. I experienced uh, trying that with my Mavic Pro and it really wasn't needed. I think the 32 was probably the highest I was going to go even on a bright day. So I think this set will do me fine. It's uh, reasonably priced. Uh, I found it on Walmart for about 30 bucks, but I've also seen it cheaper on Banggood. And then there's other places like AliExpress and GearBest. It's just all over the place. It's readily available. And it comes with a carrying case, which is nice. Not all of them come with a carrying case. Uh, so it works as advertised, I would say. Easy to install. It's easy to remove off the Mavic Mini. The Mavic Mini still stays under 250 grams with it installed. The only downside is it didn't seem to fit underneath the gimbal cover. It was a little tight, but there may be a workaround for that, I don't know. But other than that, I think they're just great. Alright, so thanks for watching. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. I'd appreciate that. And if you've got any questions, put them under the video. See you next time. This is Dave signing out.